What's up, everybody? Back with another professional picks video where we're talking about each game in week 10 and our score predictions or just overall outcome predictions for these games. We've been pretty well week in and week out. Uh, let's see if we can keep it going. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying. Give us a thumbs up in the comment section if you're liking these videos too. Or <laughs> give us a thumbs up and then let us know in the comment section what you're thinking about the video. See where we got one on our home turf. On Thursday night, what are you thinking? And what's the setup for this game? Yeah, so you got the the one and seven Panthers coming to Soldier Field. The Bears not looking much better, sitting at two and seven. Panthers just lost by fourteen to the Colts. You read that game perfectly, Woj. And then the Bears lost by a touchdown to the Saints. A lot of turnovers from Tyson Badgett. Um, a game the Bears kind of had a chance to stay in. Regardless, heading into this matchup. The Bears hold both of these first round picks. Um, looking at a minus three and a half favorite at home here. A little steep for my liking, but what's your initial in here, Woj? Yeah, I don't it's not often that you see the Bears, and especially a Bears team this poor that's favored by more than a field goal, even if they are at home. And just the pure fact that they are favored by that much makes me start to like that, even if Bajan's playing, but I really do. I, I think that Justin Fields should be playing this game. And if he does, um, I think that the Bears win this one. And I won't be surprised at all if they went by more than a field goal. The Panthers just really don't seem to have too much going for them. You know, CJ Stroud has certainly made much more strides than Bryce Young has at a quarterback being one and two, respectively, picking this draft. And, you know, this this game's moving quick for him. And it, luck, and unlike a lot of other young quarterbacks, he can't rely on a run game to really take some of the pressure off him. And so I think with the poor defense, you saw that the run game, it was a big re- weakness for them on defense against the Colts. Um, the Bears actually have a very highly rated run or pass run blocking offense at the third best in the league. So I do feel like the Bears could win this game. I won't be surprised at all if they cover it. I won't be a victim to another Bears letdown, though, so I'm not going to bet it. <laughs> but I do think they should win this game on a short week here. Um, I think the Bears got this one. And they looked better against the Saints, I think. I would like to hear what your thoughts about it are, but I was even for a loss, I was a little bit impressed with the Bears. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was getting at. Tyson Badgett, if he could cut down on the turnovers, he has six interceptions in just his three and a half games he's played. If he had half as many turnovers, he he would look like a pretty solid quarterback and probably beat the Saints in this last game. Yeah. I think to your point, it almost doesn't matter who the Bears roll out, whether it's Bajan or Fields. I think the Bears do win this game. It's just the hook on the field goal. I could see the Bears winning by a field goal. Mm -hmm. The hook is what scares me. I think it's a fairly nice um, money line to add to a parlay or if you want to do something else with it. But yeah, that's kind of my read. Bryce Young, like you said, he's looked awful. He's 32nd in QBR in the league. Hasn't had a lot of weapons, but at the same time, you have C.J. Stroud, who's flourishing in Houston. That's looked like somewhere where a quarterback can't succeed. So there's only so many excuses you could give a guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like the Bears to win that one, though. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. But, I, you know, the hook is what is scary, no doubt. Yeah. Next up, we got the Frankfurt game. This one's <laughs> in Germany. Four and five Colts going up against the two and seven Patriots now. Um, Patriots couldn't pull out the win against the unloading Commanders. Yeah, the Colts dude. took care of took care of business against the Panthers, as we just mentioned. Almost a pick 'em game here. If you're looking at the money lines, it's on a neutral site. Yep, kind of a, a better dream, at least in my mind. You just take who you think's better. Not too many external factors. Yeah, I, I what totally do you agree. like? I was talking with Mark uh, on Sunday, and he was like, we're done betting. He's done betting the Patriots. I'm like, yeah, these guys are just <laughs> terrible. They had every opportunity to beat the Commanders, and they still couldn't do it. And yet, I still find myself liking the Patriots in this game, especially in a game where the Colts just blew out the Panthers, and the Patriots, you think they can't look any worse. Why is it so close? You know, it's I've gotten burned a couple times playing the reverse trap game or playing the opposite side of a trap. I do think this is a trap game. Um, I really like the Patriots. If the under was a little bit lower, I would love them in a tease, in like a plus seven and a half, which is a great line for a teaser. But uh, they've let me down so much, I will not bet on them. But if you had to make me pick one team in this game, I think I would pick the Patriots. I don't think it makes sense on paper, um, but neither does the spread, which is 
odd to me. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually with you on the Patriots. They're second in the NFL in run defense, according to PFF. Mm-hmm. Matches up pretty mm-hmm. well with this Colts offense, who not has doesn't have the best run game in the NFL, but still relies on that run game. Um, I think they do just match up a little bit better. It's 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 a pickup game though. Go either way. But yeah, yeah I, would, I would side with the Patriots if I had to. You know, when the Patriots get a little bit desperate, um, which happens as they start to get, you know, worse and worse in their record book here, uh, they start to pick up games maybe they shouldn't two and seven. I don't see the Patriots going two and eight, just anecdotal. Like the Colts are four and five. I think the Colts are overachieving right now. The Patriots Underachieving a little bit, not drastically, but this is a game that they win to not go two and eight. You know, they're not winning two of their first right. five games. Ugh. I actually am going to redact what I said 30 seconds ago, and I'm probably going to bet the Patriots this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, knowing, Can't help that knowing that they're that good at the run defense really makes me believe in them. I'm glad uh, you pointed that out. I think that's very relevant against this Colts team, but that's how you stop. You make Garner Mitchell make throws, and that's the only chance you're going to have of beating them because you let. Taylor run on you all game, you're not going to win that one. Yeah, yeah, I think they match up well. Moving on, a really good matchup in my mind. I was ex- surprised to see the spread sitting at six and a half here. Texans yeah. coming off the win against the Bucks. Stroud with his big game, five touchdowns, 470 passing yards. And then the Bengals even bounced back. Um, the really nice win against the Bills, kind of showing that they're, they're not completely lost after – their their rough start to the season, to say the least. Mm-hmm. PFF PFF says the Texans are the better team offensive, defensively. Although the Bengals stats are probably dragged down by those first few games in the year. Just about to Burrow, say that. calf. Yep. Um this game should be pretty awesome though. Are you buying more into the Stroud MVP caliber season or are you <laughs> buying more into the Bengals turnaround? Yeah, that's a hefty allegation for the Stroud MVP, but I get what you're saying. With the last game, he's looked unreal. Um you know, it's crazy to me because the Bengals, almost every game they play seems to be must win because they're still last in their division. They're five and three, still last in the division. Browns are better than them. Um, Bengals are five and three. Browns are five and three. Steelers are five and three. And then the Ravens are seven and two. Like a very tough division here. Um, At this moment, they're all in the playoffs. They're all in the playoffs. It's wild. And, you know, luckily the Ravens play the Browns, so the Bengals will be able to pick up some ground on them. But it's wild. That they're, you know, they still have to keep winning games, like because they just can't drop games against opponents uh, that they should be beating. Gross, they're not going to make the playoffs. So for that reason, I really like the Bengals, and they really are looking like the Super Bowl caliber team we've seen over the last couple of seasons. I am starting to buy in more and more um, on Stroud with the MVP caliber stuff. Like he's looked great. I don't think it's a fluke, but I do think he's a, in a great system, and he, you know what, he's playing great. But I think he's in a great system too. Um, like there's some external factors there, but the Bengals should win this game. I'd be surprised I didn't. Mine, it was at minus seven, now it's six and a half. So people were liking Stroud and the Texans here at that. I think six and a half is a great line. Um, like at plus seven and a half, I think you bet the Texans at minus six and a half. You almost bet the Bengals here. I think it's a great spot for the Bengals to tease down to this to pick him game, but I really would be surprised they lost just given how much momentum they've built so far and still how far behind the eight ball they are with being last in their division. It's hard to picture a, a five and three team being in last place, but that's exactly what's happening. And the Ravens should beat the Browns and the Steelers are supposed to beat the giant or the Packers at home. So this is still always going to be a tough divisional race for the Bengals. Um, lucky huge win against the bills. They got the tiebreaker against them now, um, assuming that the bills are the wild card out of the AFC East. AFC West not very competitive in terms of the wild card, and neither is the AFC South. So that certainly helps them, but it's going to be a fight all season long. Yeah, I I just I just think CJ Stroud in this offense somehow puts enough points to keep this game close. I, I think the Bengals win. I think you're right. I think I think you almost play it at that seven seven point spread, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I just gotta I just have a feeling that the Texans. And maybe I'm with the public. I have no clue. I didn't check the public on this one. Mm-hmm. But maybe yeah. maybe I'm falling into the trap of CJ Stroud's big last week. But but he's one interception on the season. He just I'm more so buying in. He's not making mistakes. He's keeping his team in the game. Yeah. And you know, we talked about the Bengals, some of their PFF rating being lower because of Joe Burrow being out at the start of the season in terms of at hundred percent. 
Uh, you know, this Bengals, which I think is very true, this Bengals coverage D is ranked third worst in the league. They don't have the excuse of, you know, mm-hmm. playing hurt. And especially when the Bengals were losing early on, that's when teams should be running the football against you, not throwing it more. So the fact that this Bengals team is uh, weak in coverage throughout the whole season supports your idea. It also makes me think if the Bengals are going to win this game and they don't have a good secondary, then I'd like the over more and more the more we talk about this. Um, yeah. That's something I might be playing this week because, uh, yeah. like you said, these these quarterbacks make mistakes. These quarterbacks have a lot of weapons, and they've been playing great over the last few weeks. It almost seems like a trap to take the over here because they what I just said. Like, it, uh, it, but at the same happen. time, the NFL has had these really low totals on the season. Like forty eight almost seems high, like really yeah. high. Yeah, to the point where you, you 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 go with the odds makers, take the over because. Mm-hmm. It, it, the totals have been very low this year. I feel like it's low scoring games, shifting a little bit more defensively. Oh, I'm just at least, at least a... yeah, no. Something that uh we'll talk about actually when we get to the games later. I got a good stat for you in terms of <laughs> I mentioned this one just in the last video here with the Steelers. Uh, I think it started at three and a half and now it's three at home against uh the Packers. What do you got going into this game? So like, what do you... Yeah. I mean Steelers beat the Titans last Thursday, so they got the, the couple extra days of preparation, head into this one at home. And the Packers picked up the win, shutting down right being in the Rams. Um, the Rams actually just picked up Carson Wentz now after that. Did they? Um, today, yeah. So I like it. I, I mean, I don't know how much you want to put into that, but I mean, that Rams offense looked awful. Not anyone could be better than Rams. Packers, Packers are the better rated team, according to PFF, even with the, the worst record. Mm-hmm. Not a flashy QB matchup. My one interesting stat I found heading in this one, Kenny Pickett, second highest PFF grade in the fourth quarter since week seven of last year. That is wild. That's He's right there wild. with Brady and Mahomes, I guess. That's or, I, I, some That's Tomlin funny. was hyping him up. But anyways, Ken, apparently Kenny Pickett comes to play in the fourth he quarter. To play the fourth close, quarter. Game, close game like this. You know what? That's any time. That's exactly that's, that supports exactly what I was thinking. Close game. First of all, give me the better fourth quarter quarterback there. And that's sounds like it's picking. It's tough to beat him. <laughs> um, we talked I talked about the last few weeks. I loved some coaches after bye weeks. You know, playing on Thursday night, you get a mini bye week, you get you guys to rest up, a little extra time to game plan. There are a few guys that's more dangerous than Mike than Mike Tomlin with the Steelers. So that makes me like them more. This Kenny Pickett fourth quarter thing makes me like them more. I don't think this Packers – you shouldn't be reading too much in that Packers win against the Rams because that's a disgusting game from the Rams. I'm usually saying about the Packers, uh, but this time it's against their opponent. Have we seen anything really that impressive from Jordan Love this season? Again, outside that week one Bears game, I can't say I have. I don't think this receiving course gave him too much help, but that's besides the fact. Going into Pittsburgh is going to be a tough game. These guys, again, while they are 5-3 and three, – they're they're tied for last. It, you know they're in second place in reality, but they're tied for last for their division. This is such a tight division that everyone in this AFC North needs to be playing like every game is must win because it is. You know Mike Tomlin's not one to miss the playoffs as we know, and doing that requires you to beat teams that you should. That's what he's done so far this season. We say it every week in and week out, and they beat the teams they should. They continue to do yeah. And low total, give me the better discipline, better coach team. That seems like the Steelers. Better pass rush while it's marginal because there are some good guys in that defense line for the Packers. Give me TJ Watt and the Steelers. And then give me the better fourth quarter quarterback. Long week, everything at home. It's all point of Steelers. I really like the minus three, quite honestly. Yeah, no, I love it. I mean, even even when the 20 points they put up against the Rams, uh, that is the Packers. Like, mm-hmm. Jordan Love didn't look great. He didn't. Other than his first couple weeks, really, <laughs> um, against the Bears, uh, he's – He's trended down consistently, almost to the point where where you have to fade him. Like I don't, I don't see enough there to to believe in that Packers offense. Yeah, especially against the Pittsburgh defense. No, I'm I'm totally with you. I'm looking at the game. I want to see what those drives were like. Yeah, I mean, or... you got to keep in mind there's all that stuff with the George Pickens drama. So what's going on? There? I mean, he was he was upset with being in Pittsburgh. Um. I don't know, said like free me type of things on Instagram. No, Mike Tomlin said it was a pebble in his shoe. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not too worried about it, honestly. And dude, the Packers had so many fumbles. Jesus Christ. They too Packers, I'm just looking at the quick what they did each drive. They they didn't impress me. They didn't impress me when I watched him looking even closer. They didn't impress me. 
Steelers beat a solid team against uh, the Titans. And, you know, I'm going to Seems like they shouldn't win. They, I saw the Steelers were the only team in football to be outgained every, in yardage every single game, <laughs> and win, and have a winning record. It's happened like only thirty times in the history of the NFL. Hasn't happened in like the last seventy years, and this is the first team ever to do that and also have a winning record. So that they, it, it's got to crumble sometimes, which makes me a little more scared. But it's a very different story. The team they played on Thursday night was the Titans, coming off a loss. Bucks tough loss against the Falcons. I don't want to steal your thunder. How do you want to intro this game, and what do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned both teams coming off losses. They're both sitting at three and five. Two bottom third teams, um, according to PFF, that also goes for their defenses. I mean, so two years ago, you flashed back. These teams both had pretty strong defenses. Can't rely on that anymore. Mm -mm. Um, I'm looking to the quarterbacks first of all, in this one. Does does Levis give you more confidence from what you've seen through the first two games? Or or would you trust Baker more in what you've seen in his kind I of think middle I mean, Yes to both. Honestly, I'm impressed with Levis not really turning the ball over too much in his first couple starts. That's impressive. But, you know, if the, the Bucks win this game against the Texans, people are going to be t- people should be talking about how well Baker Mayfield played in that game and in all the other games that they won. You know, they'd be four and four. Uh, much better than most people expected from the Buccaneers through eight games this season. And Baker Mayfield's looked much better than people have, would ever even have thought, uh, given his past performances recently with the Browns. So I'm impressed with Levis, but I still like Baker Mayfield over him in this game. Not saying that's for the outcome, but just in terms of quarterback play. Uh, I, You know what? I've been making so much money each year, this, especially this year, teasing the Titans in close games. I did it last week versus the Steelers. <laughs> it worked out. I'm going to do it again. I have to. Keeps working. Why stop? Very, every game, every time the Titans play, it is an extremely low total, close game, and they're the underdogs. It is the perfect tease every time. Again, uh, Mike Vrabel coming off this mini bye week here. I just, I had, I think, I am. If I had to pick a winner, I'd probably still pick the Titans. But that's because I'm so biased to them, and I have been. And I'm going to admit that. But I am going to tease this game at seven. <laughs> I absolutely have to. Yeah, that's your recipe. Has has worked it's, it's pretty money. much every single time. <laughs> What do you think? Yeah. I mean, uh, these these teams have both kind of, um, I don't know. I would say maybe played up to par, but I, I mean, both these teams could easily be sitting with a 500 or just above 500 record. So okay. I was expecting a little bit more from each of these teams. Um, kind of tough read for me, but in almost a toss up game, I think I think I would okay. have to go with the Bucks just money line here, and they're at home. Home team um, for sure. Not that time. I think you go Vrabel, Vrabel over Bowles all day in, in the coaching match. Without a doubt. But, but yeah, I think I don't know. It's like like you mentioned, Bucks tough tough loss. Even the Titans. I mean, they're both coming off tough losses. Titans have the extra time to prepare. Like you could sell it either way. I agree. You definitely can sell it either way. That's why I think I like the Titans uh, to just lose by less than a touchdown or a touchdown or less. All right, next up, we got the 5-3 and three Browns going to the 7-2 and two Ravens. AFC North matchup. Somebody's got to lose. Somebody's got to lose. Browns run. shut out the Cardinals last week. Um, Clayton Toon starting. Um, oh, take it for what it play. is. But then the Ravens absolutely destroyed the Seahawks. Um, I was expecting that to be a much closer game. Me so, too. Very impressed. What was that, Woj? Under still hit. That was the one win in the card this week. The I know. I know, rough week for us, but it's, we've been off pretty much all season. This is going to be the bounce back. Oh, yeah. Ravens still – or Ravens are number three in PFF. Um, teams like seems like a tough matchup on paper. Both teams want to dominate the trenches. So, in my mind, I, I think it's going to be closer than this. This spread. Totally agree. Totally agree. I, I wouldn't be shocked that Browns win this game because this is going to be a dirty, grimy game in Baltimore. I almost want to hammer this under because both these teams are, like you mentioned, very similar in identity where they're trying to run the ball as their identity in their offense, and they're really not passing it all too much. Uh, Lamar Jackson, obviously not the passing quarterback while he can. That's not where they rely on. It's not, they never re- relied on him. Uh, to do that in his career. And the Browns, it's not like Deshaun Watson, whoever's lined up at quarterback for the Browns, has looked great passing the ball, even when they're throwing to guys like Amari Cooper 
these teams want to run the ball here. Um, I do think it's going to be close. I don't think it should be. I do think the Browns should put up very little points because I'm not impressed at all with one, their run game, quite honestly. And like Jerome Ford getting like 20 carries, but I guess the Cardinals and only getting like 50 yards, like they should be doing more than that. And then Deshaun Watson hasn't looked impressive at quarterback. I wouldn't be surprised if we're saying the same thing next week that we just said about the Ravens um, Seahawks, where we think it should be closer then the Ravens defense absolutely dominates. Yeah. And, I know that's, and the Browns that's put up three word. points. So I wouldn't be shocked either way. I do think I'm taking the under again because I do think it's going to be a close game. It should be a close game. And I also have a hard time imagining the Browns putting up points. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my one worry. I could see that the Ravens defense is absolutely dominating, but I think, I think in a game where both teams are built strongly around both their offensive and defensive lines, I think yeah, it's just set up for a very low scoring game and, I mean, Deshaun's back. They should be able to score at least one or two touchdowns. We will see. I that would be a fun one to watch. Not lost the whole game since it's gonna be so low scoring, but yeah, it's yeah, checking in on for sure. All right, moving along. We got the five and three 49ers now heading to the the six and two Jaguars. Both teams coming off of buys. Jags number one team in the NFL in takeaways per game. Um, Niners added Chase Young during their bye week. Four Niners still sitting at number two in PFF, even after three straight losses in the Jags at 13 overall. So PFF's not buying completely into these records. Mm-hmm. Feels like the Niners can't lose four straight, right? Or, or you're is this, right. Is this no, you're right. Record? You're totally right. They're going to win this game. The Niners are winning this game. They have to. And I don't have a ton of analysis, and I'll give you a little bit of more fundamental stuff soon. But quite honestly, they're both after a buy, so let's call that a wash. Shanahan's more strategic head coach. Give him a little bit of edge there for the buy, but relatively um, in- insignificant here. They got to win. The, the The Jaguars have such a cushion in that AFC South. They're not feeling the pressure nearly as much as the Niners. I really wanted the Seahawks to win somehow against the Ravens to put a little bit more pressure on the Niners. But it is really, it truly is a must win game. The thing that I really like about the Niners here is that you know, no, no doubt about it. They want Brock Purdy to do as little as he can to make this offense go and put him in this low pressure situations. And a lot of times that's run, uh, relying on the run game. They obviously have a great offensive line. They have Christian McCaffrey. They have even Debo Samuel when he's healthy running the ball a lot. This Jaguars team is the fourth worst uh, uh, to run blocking. This Jaguars team is the terrible run blocking unit. Um, so let's say about that. The Niners can try to control the ball, the run game. The Jaguars might try to do that as well. They're not going to be able to at all. They're going to find themselves in a lot of uh, down and distances, and that's not how you beat this 49ers team either. So we're looking for the Niners to use the run game um, to alleviate some of the pressure on Brock Purdy, and then the flip side, look for the Niners to dominate the run game there. That's how they usually win games, is like we talked about, dominating that line of scrimmage. And I think they'll do it again this game. Jags middle of the road and run and run defense. Yeah, I think this is a game where the Niners can play more to their bread and butter and really take advantage of it. Um, especially with a team like the Jaguars, who want to get a little bit pretty on offense, pass the ball a lot. Um, I mean, and they they could they do create turnovers. That's that's the one caveat for this game. Um, if sure. if they get that pressure on Purdy, create a couple turnovers. I think that's that's their real chance to winning this game. Yeah, they have an insane coverage grade. They don't rush the passer very well, so pretty should have time. But he's going against up, going up against a very good coverage unit in this Jaguars team. Yeah, regardless, still, still like the Niners to. Yeah, I agree. Break the losing streak. They did. It's it's really what you said. They can't lose again. They just they just I don't understand. All right, next up, two five and four teams. Saints just beat the Bears as we talked about earlier. Defense continues to look elite, forced a bunch of turnovers. Yeah. And then Josh Dobbs making his debut in Minnesota, the pastronaut, beat the Falcons <laughs> for their fourth straight win. That is great. Derek Carr has been looking a lot better, I will say, uh, in the last couple of weeks from when I was watching them early in the season. So, I mean, the Saints are kind of coming around. I mean, they are above 500. Yeah. Vikings on the other end continuing to find ways to win in the defense yeah, kind of is lot, playing man. a lot better than what was advertised this season. Yeah, they started 0-3 and they're 5-4. and They're ranked higher than the Saints in PFF. You know, like this is uh, this is kind of nuts here. 
Um, but you said the Saints Saints defense still is elite, like with those turnovers, that would definitely help them. I was a little discouraged in how Bajan was running all over him, especially in that first half there. Uh, lucky enough to force some turnovers, but I didn't love the way that the Bears were able to put up points against the Saints offense or Saints defense, quite honestly. I am very encouraged. The same, same thing I said after the Saints beat the Colts applies to when the Saints beat the Bears. Encouraged that the Saints keep putting up plenty of points on offense, keeping Taysom Hill very involved in this gadget offense that is going to keep every defense on their heels. But I'm a little worrisome of that New Orleans front seven and how they've let uh, other teams kind of push the ball downfield against them. Coverage unit's still great, but um, I'm looking for them to do a little bit more in terms of starting team down in a points per game aspect. You know, again, Bajan tore him up in the run game. What can Dobbs do? Who's been heavily right. lying on their legs. It's tough for me to say. I personally will always take a team with better defense, but it's scary to me they're on the road here in the way that Dobbs and this team have been playing. Everyone on this Vikings team has stepped up, especially in the absence of JJ and Kirk Cousins. And they looked really good in their last five games. We'll see what they can do again. I think I have to lean in the Saints, though, again, with the better defense and their knack and to turn, to turn the ball over defensively. Yeah, I think I think Dobbs with that that win against the Falcons. I mean, the Falcons are kind of seem like they're falling apart. Yes, they um, are. Dobbs yes, they are. definitely played well, but I, th- I think they're going to be a little bit high up on themselves. The big win last week. Agreed. They, Agreed. They and you know, this is a guy defense. like it's a it's a gitch kind of thing. You're going to get a legit defense now. This guy doesn't. You can't learn a playbook in a week and a half, two weeks. Like their offense yeah. game is so limited. Um. I He's just, teaching them the cadence before the game, like yeah. on the sidelines. So like, I there's gonna, I mean, gonna, gonna be this game's down the road because if this was in New Orleans, this guy wouldn't be. They would have a trillion false starts for that offensive line, uh, with the noise that's created in that Superdome. We'll see what happens, but I think I like the Saints here. I can't take it just the way they, the way they look, but it's I, the defense is just such so much superior. All right, next up, we've got the four and five Falcons now, and the one and eight Cardinals. Um, heading into Arizona, another game that's pretty much a pick em. Falcons coming off the loss to the Vikings. Um, Cardinals lost to the Browns. Two games we already talked about. Kyler Murray is going to be back this week. Saw that. Um, there's also going to be the, the new Modern Warfare dropping. I know. It's, it's, <laughs> uh, said the same thing. Kind of I, commercial. I, I, I know they're, they're just going to give too much reason to believe in this, but but I, I just feel like the Falcons are falling apart over there. Um, I know they're four and five. I know you're you're probably not going to agree with me on this one, but but I think Kyler Murray steps in, and I think I think the Cardinals win this game. Just, you think the Cardinals win? Again, yeah. Again, no. I reason. do too. Oh. I totally, I totally oh. agree. I just, I think the Cardinals win this game too. The, the Falcons are terrible for how much talent they have. There are there is no team in this league that's following talent like the Falcons. Not a single team, and. I also like Kyler Murray to come back and win this game against them. It, I don't know. If something about the Falcons are so plain vanilla that they don't do anything special where teams can just prepare for it and kind of play. If, if, if they can't do anything special, they won't beat the Falcons. If they can't do something special, they're going to beat the Falcons. Let's, I think let's, let's see Kyler Murray come back in his first game, do a little magic running around. And uh, as long as he doesn't get injured, I like the Falcons too. Sorry, yeah. the Cardinals. The Cardinals. The Cardinals yeah. Yeah. No, I'm glad you but think I wasn't going to agree with you and then did. That I didn't. Sense. I did not think you were going to agree. No, but... I'm with you. I did the, the I, Falcons are terrible, dude. They're just disgusting. They don't use their talent at all. I don't understand. Yeah. Arthur Smith quickly it's, becoming uh, it's, it's frustrating. a very unfair coach. Yeah. Six and two Lions going to L.A., who's now four and four. Lions off the bye. Chargers have the short week two after the Monday win against the Jets. Kind of just really sets it up for the Lions in my mind with the extra preparation, shorter week for the Chargers. Um, I mean, the Lions are the better team in my mind. PFF also agrees. I just, I think they're going to absolutely roll in this one. This just seems like a trap line to me. You think the, sorry, I was, I want to make sure. I, I think the Lions are going to absolutely roll. roll. Yeah, I do too. We're on the same page here. Um, you know, what, I was not impressed by the Chargers offense. Granted, they were going up against a good Jets defense, but I was not impressed by that. What really saved them was their pass rush, getting to Zach Wilson all the time. Um, And the Jets have a pretty terrible offensive line. The Lions have the best offensive line in football 
Uh, just anecdotally and watching them play, it's the best offensive line. They have the second best run block unit and the third best pass block unit. You know, they're going to do their best to stymie Bosa and um, Khalil Mack. I like this offense, the week of preparation. Again, I don't think the Chargers are a legitimate team, although they are playing with the desperation factor um, as they are fighting for that last wild card spot that we're talking about. One of those teams, the AFC North, um, might not get and, and probably won't get. So it makes me scared that it is desperation for the Chargers and they're looking better. But I would have to think the Lions were all here too. Again, it all stems from the fact that I think the Chargers are a fake football team. Yeah, I just yeah, I don't I don't like Brandon Staley as a head coach. And give give Dan Campbell an extra week of preparation. Um just get some of these guys healthy. I just I don't I don't see how I wouldn't bet the Chargers at all in this game rather than just not taking it. Exactly. Exactly. I could see the argument for the over. I could almost see him for the under. I don't know. I just don't, I just don't like the Chargers. Don't like him at all. 16 all right. and a half now for this yep. game? Biggest, biggest spread of the week. NFC's matchup. Two and seven Giants. Five and three Cowboys. Giants lost to the Raiders and by 24 in a game it's that game. was just awful. And then Cowboys couldn't pull out in the fourth quarter. Against the Eagles, had a couple opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's a huge spread. Not really even worth. We never touch huge spread out. games. Like, yeah, the Cowboys win this game. The real question is, do the Giants put up seven points? I think six and a half is the line. I, would I think it goes over. The total? I think I think, I think the Cow- – Dak Prescott's looked great the last two weeks. You, I think the Cowboys put up – could put up four themselves. With That's what I'm saying, yeah. Probably puts up. They could put I mean, up like 35, just have the Giants score one touchdown. Yeah. Uh, look for the Giants, uh, uh, the Cowboys need to put up some crazy points this game. This would be a good game, I think. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to the Seahawks this year. They're fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Four and five commanders beat the Patriots even after letting go of Montez Sweat and Chase Young. Mm-hmm. And the Seahawks just got absolutely demolished on the road to the Ravens. Um, Pretty – or six six point favorite here for the Seahawks at home. About what I expect. Ah, tough read for me. I just I think it's well well priced there at the six points. Any Agreed. any lean for you, Woj? I think six points is a little hefty for me to be investing that in this Seattle team. That being said, I do think this is a game they win. This like I'm confident in saying the Seahawks win this game. Bounce back a uh, game for them after a tough loss against the the Ravens. We know they're better than that. You know they're. Before going into that week, they were a top 10 PFF graded offense and top 10 rated defense. Just fell out with their defensive ranking there. But this commander's team really should have lost against the Patriots. They did not play well. Now they're traveling across the country. Um, in their second straight road game, granted, the New England's not much of a travel for them, but that matters. And I think Seahawks at home trying to get back in track here, on track here, win this game. Six is tough. It's like I, if I had to pick one, I would pick the Seahawks minus six. I just I like the way their defense plays, and um, yeah, I think this is a good just, spot for a tease. Like yeah, said, perfect spot for a tease. Just if, if we're just win the game outright. Yep, agreed. Anything that anything on the contrary that you think about this game? Anything you want to add? Nothing on the contrary. I I, I really do think the Commanders are trying to like almost offload and kind of lose. So I was really surprised, mm-hmm. like you mentioned, um, to beat the Patriots last week. One of those interceptions um, from Sam Howell was egregious. He looked like he was throwing right to the Patriots guy in the end zone. It was yeah, like I just bad I don't, for me. Like and this is a game the Seahawks need to win or don't, but really want to win. Um it's, you know it's, in it's the second NFC half West. of the season I just, and it's, well, yeah. they're not winning their division. They're just not going to. Um, they have two more head-to-head matchups, I think, with the Niners. The best case scenario, they split those games, and uh, they it's gonna be t- they have a very tough schedule. Yeah, they have a very one. tough schedule this rest of the season. They got the Eagles, they got the Chiefs, they got Dallas, they got tough games. Uh, they got to win these for sure. All right, second to last game here. This is Sunday night game. Got, Jesus, yes. Jets four and four. A lot of primetime games. Um, I'll expect it to see Rodgers this year. But they're yeah, at the yeah. four and five Raiders now. But honestly, the Raiders might have a little something that they found this last your, week. Your boy. They they won um in term Antonio Pierce's first game 
They celebrate it like it was the Super Bowl. They're lighting up like cigars and whatnot in the locker room. They're Uh, partying. So um, Antonio Pierce brought all the the practice squad players and had them on the sideline for the game. He's changing the he's changing the the culture in I Vegas. I don't know. The players yeah. seem to be buying into it. It was one game, and it was against the Giants, though. Yeah, it's not really too much into it. But that Jets, being said, the Jets hand, look terrible too. I just yeah, I don't know how you could ever put any money on Zach Wilson and and feel confident. Yeah, I, just, I really don't know what I like this game. Fun stat that Moody told me yesterday is that like primetime unders this season are incredibly profitable. Uh, it happened again uh, last night with the Chargers and Jets too. I don't know. I'm not – the Jets are better than what they've shown me. I'm just waiting. And like Zach Wilson has a ton of mistakes built in him, but he's also got a ton of talent too. So is, when is he going to pop off? When is he going to have a good game? Who knows? Um, I don't really like anything here. I'm guessing – I mean, the right move would be Raiders at home, teaser to plus seven and a half. Can the Jets beat you by more than a touchdown? They're showing that they have a really hard time doing that. Um, I think that would be my play. I don't love it, but the Matt says the Raiders plus – Seven and a half, you know, again, part of a teaser is a great play. I don't know what I like this yeah. game. Under seems decent, like what I said, just said with that, um, prime time unders thing. I just, I don't know. Yeah, I got to ride with my boy, Aiden O'Connell. I'm on yes, Raiders' money line. Right, so we're both in the Raiders, then that's settled. Yeah, dude, he's, he's too good. <laughs> he's biggest, too good. Biggest yardage play in, a, in his last start. Did um, you for the Raiders know? all season? Really? Yeah. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know he's Scotty Elter's first cousin? Yes, I did. Yeah, you should have. That's fucking – my mom told me that. Yeah. Okay, last game. <laughs> Shout out Scotty Elter, baby. Yeah. Not a bad legend. All uh, right, last up, the Monday night game. Really just a weird card all around. I know, um, right? Three and five Broncos head into Buffalo. Buffalo is now five and four. Um, not playing as well as everybody might have thought, but Broncos are off of a bye this week. Yeah, um, another little wrinkle to toss in there, and then the Bills lost to the Bengals. We talked about earlier. Josh Allen's interception streak continues. Um, I still think the Bills are a great team. I think Josh Allen's hurting them way too much. Um, mm-hmm. with just trying to win the game on every single play on offense. What's what's your lean in this one? Do you do you think the Bills come around and win this in convincing fashion? Or, or is the Broncos off a of bye too much at seven and a half? Um, good questions. I'll answer with what I want to say first, and then I'll answer directly answer the question. I think one leg of the lock of the week is going to be the Bills tease down to one and a half. They have to win this game. They're not a 500 ball club. They're somehow still top four in PFF ranking. But like you said, Allen kind of tries. He's, he does what Aaron Rodgers does at quarterback, especially with the Packers. He does tries to do too much. He's got all the talent in the world, but he's not patient enough to let the game come to him. You know, that's something that, like, what makes Brady so great. He was able to let the game come to him, take what it gave him. Rodgers doesn't do that. Allen doesn't do that either. Luckily, the Broncos are going to give you a lot early with their, the way their defense is playing. Um, I, I'm a little bit nervous in seven and a half because they are for buying. They have looked decent. But outside of that Chiefs game, you know, this defense for the Broncos hasn't, hasn't looked all that great, not that impressive. Also, primetime game in Buffalo in the cold, like that's when they thrive. Those fans get crazy. The Bills certainly feed off the energy. There is not a doubt in my mind the Bills win this game. Um, I would also lean on them to, honestly, seven and a half seems pretty great, too. I just think the Bills crush them. They, they, like a lot of anger taken out on a vastly inferior team. This is the Broncos defense that the Bears tear them up. Yeah, no, that's true. Okay, Even with the bye, yeah. I mean, I think it's another great teaser opportunity. Worst defensive ranked team in the league, according to PFF, Denver Broncos. Like, come on. They don't do anything well. And Von Miller revenge game. I am I hate – these guys stink. I haven't even been them. I'm not even mad about any lost bets. I just hate them. They're terrible. They're yes. winning this game by a lot. I'm with you. <laughs> At least your line of questioning. <laughs> All right, I think that's the uh, it's a great end of the video. Me just rambling about how I hate these guys. Yeah, I, think it was. I, think, I think we're lining up for some good picks in week 10. Yeah, I'm excited to see what you got on the card.